right, so in this, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about a, a topic from physics, um, which lets you uh, see one of the uses for, for the divergence theorem. Um, so you don't need to know all the details here. You don't need to have taken a course in, in electricity and magnetism. Uh, you just need to know some of the basics. And, and what I'm going to show you is not, it's not the most general version of Gauss's law, because Gauss's law um, is, is valid, you know, for, doesn't matter what kind of, you know, what is generating the electric charge, whether it's a single point charge, whether it's many point charges, some kind of distribution of charge, uh, Gauss's law is still valid, which says that the total flux uh, electric flux across any closed surface S is given by the charge divided by this constant, this permittivity of free space, right? Um, so what this says as, as an equation is this says that the integral over S, right, of E, the electric vector field, uh, dS, is equal to Q over epsilon naught. Okay. So this is uh, this is one way of stating Gauss's law. All right. <coughs> now, what I'm going to do is is I'm going to show you how Gauss's law works um, in the context of a single point charge. So there's another rule from physics, which is Coulomb's law. We mentioned I mentioned this this formula in another video that if you have a single point charge, the electric field that's generated by a single point charge is this inverse square vector field, right? It's the charge divided by this constant. Um, R is the radial vector, x, y, z, over the magnitude cubed, right? So the magnitude of this goes as 1 over the magnitude squared. So it's one of these inverse square laws. Um, the, the main thing I want to convince you of here is that for a point charge, this is going to work, right? Doesn't matter the surface. And so the main thing I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate here is sort of a a notion of independence of surface. That it doesn't matter what kind of surface you're using to enclose that point charge, you will always get the same answer, and that answer will be this Q over epsilon naught. Um, so how is this done? Well. I told you this is an application of the divergence theorem, right? So we know that we know that the divergence theorem uh, states that the the integral over over a surface S should be okay. So we have the divergence theorem, which says that well, what you should do is you you take this and, and you integrate over the the region enclosed. I guess I shouldn't use E for it. Um, uh, let's call, I don't know, R for region. Um, the divergence of E, and, and we integrate with respect to volume, right? That's what the divergence theorem says. Um, but the divergence theorem does not actually apply here, okay? Um, so divergence theorem doesn't apply because this vector field, this is the vector field I want to use, right? Um, it's undefined. at the origin. Okay. So how do you get around that? Well, there's a little trick that we can do, right? Um, what we can do is, is we can, well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to shift our coordinate system so that this point is at the origin. This is, this is just a simplifying um, thing that we're going to do, right? Physically, it doesn't matter where in space this configuration is located. So we might as well locate it with our charge at the origin. Um, and now, what I can do is for a, for a closed surface with this charge on the inside, right, we can always find a sufficiently small ball, okay? So a ball of, let's say, radius A that encloses the charge, okay? Now, one of the things that I can very quickly do is I can do this. I can say that um, for, for this ball, BA, okay, which is, which is just going to be given by um, 
x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Um, well, less than or equal to a squared, right? There's the ball, and so the surface, uh, SA is the sphere. Um, we have, we can do the integral. We can say that the integral over this SA of E dot DS is, we're going to use this E. We pull the constants out front, Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, integral over SA, R over magnitude of R cubed dot ds. Okay, we just did this integral in the last video, right? Or maybe a couple of videos ago, all right? We worked out that this, this answer here is just 4 pi, independent of the radius of the sphere. So it's q over 4 pi epsilon naught. This whole thing here is 4 pi. All right, we've already done that. So what we get? Well, we get what we're supposed to get. Q over epsilon naught, right? So Gauss's law is valid if our surface is a sphere and, and our charge is a point charge. Okay, so we're getting somewhere, right? So how do we extend? Um, well, the next step the next step is to notice something. Uh, and we did this uh, a while back. When we, were for, when we first did divergence and curl, one of the things that we showed is that this particular vector field has zero divergence, right? Um, we worked out, so what we did is that we actually kind of we looked at all vector fields of the form r over the magnitude of r to some power. We worked out that um, this was exactly the case where the divergence comes out to be, to be zero. Um, so I think to, to save time to keep this video from getting overly long, I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not gonna go too far, uh, we'll, or I'm not gonna redo the results. So we'll just state this as a given, okay? We'll state that as a given. So the divergence is zero. What does that do for you? Well, what you can do is, is you can take, um, consider the region R, which is outside this little sphere. but inside the original surface S, okay? So R is everything in between the two surfaces, outside the sphere, inside the larger surface. Um, now, the, uh, the important thing here is that our electric field, it is defined and continuously differentiable on R, okay? So we note that E1 is, this E is C1 on R. Also, the boundary of R, well, we, we gave both of these surfaces the outward orientation, right? Um, when we did that integral over there, Right, we set that surface up with the out outward orientation. Um, but the, the sort of positively oriented boundary for R has to take the outward orientation for, for this, right? But the inside, we always want the normal vector pointing away from the region that's being bounded. So we have to reverse the orientation on the inside. So the boundary is S minus SA. Okay. Um, now we know that the difference between the integral over our original surface and the integral over the ball 
Well, this is just the integral of E over the boundary of R. And by the divergence theorem, that's the same thing as the integral over R of the divergence of E. Um, but as I mentioned, we showed several videos back that that divergence is zero. So this integral is zero. Um, and so that means that these two integrals have to be equal. We know that this one is equal to q over epsilon naught. So now we know that that one's q over epsilon naught as well, right? Um, so that, that gives you Gauss's law for a point charge. Um, the way you move from a point charge to, to kind of a more general setup where you have some distribution of charge is, is more complicated. Um, it's beyond what we want to do in this course. It's something you might do in a, in a physics course. Uh, essentially what you do is you, you assume that your the electric field satisfies what's called a superposition principle. Um, so you, you assume that your distribution of charge is, is made up of a whole bunch of point charges. I mean, I imagine electrons or something, I guess. Um, and, and then you kind of, you know, you do this, you kind of wrap a little ball around every single point charge and you do the same trick and you add up the results um, and, and you, you'll find that you get what you want uh, in the end. Um, but with the, with the tools we have, at the very least, um, we can do Gauss's law for a point charge.